Hi, this is Father Lewis Gertie with Friends of the Word. I thought what we'd do is sort of lean our commentary and our interviews in a very specific way today. And I'm interviewing a Catholic young man who is a Catholic attorney, a practicing attorney in New York and New Jersey, Michael Di Benedetto. Now, if you go back into the search bar, Michael was interviewed a few years ago while he was still practicing, in school as a matter of fact. So you might compare the past and the present. So Michael is now practicing. Michael, thank you very much for you, Father, appreciate it. allowing us to come into your home and, yeah. and interview you and, and carry on that conversation that you began way back when. Yeah. And I think I remember you were part of the St. Thomas More Association at school. The, the uh, um, Catholic Law Students Association. Um, and uh, at in St. John's Law School, and we had some great events, including a St. Thomas More program, and we just promoted religious freedom and other type of uh, concepts on a law school campus, which is which was very um, positive um, impact on the campus. What I want to do today is um, get your insights as to what are some of the hot topics that we as Catholics should be aware of that are in the marketplace, in the legal aspects of the, of, of, um, the church and the world. Um, we're not asking the law to be changed in favor of Catholic events, etc., but we want the law to re represent us as Catholics in a, a just way. I, yeah. I guess I'm term you know, that terminology is correct. Yeah. Correct me if I'm, if it's yeah. wrong. Um, what do you think of some right now in 2022, some of the hot topics that we yes. as Catholics should be aware of? I think the, the word religion and Catholic specifically has a, has a negative connotation sometimes in the public. Like people mm. are afraid of religion, mm. reflect religious beliefs, basic things like prayer. I mean, one example is, um, there's a Supreme court case, um, that has to do with a football coach that had, a had a prayer that he said after every football game he coached and he was embroiled in a lot of litigation with his public school district because he decided to promote his faith ideals after the football game and to unite the community and you know there's a lot of backlash in regards to the action okay i now remember that i yeah. know that that yeah. case um for, for clarity's sake yeah he was a practicing catholic or i think he christian? was just a, i think he was just a, a christian okay I'm, I'm and a, how did he pray and promote his so, faith so what happened is he coached he would coach the football game and then after the football game uh he would on the in in the middle of the field after the game was over he would just devote a prayer you know himself was, or ask the team to. he would be there himself but the team would join him his team and actually on a lot of occasions the opposing team would also join him like being grateful for this game being grateful for the opportunity to play this game all great, just great, you know stuff great. which is promoting faith but also good sportsmanship you yeah know, to have yeah. teams come together and pray and after the game yeah yeah, yeah, I, mean, yeah. I, mean, I mean it was after the game too so i mean it's good yeah, okay so, yeah. and give me some of the backlash and give me some of the support that he um, received i he i mean he's received a lot of uh, backlash from a lot of different organizations especially some atheist organizations um and other pockets of of the country that don't want you know religion anywhere near public schools or any type of state um, at events that are going on. So I would say he's got a lot of backlash from from those uh, factions of the country. Mm. I would say he's got a lot of support, but I think he needs more support from the church, from you know Christians, from Muslims, from Jews. Um, I think that would be helpful if there was a unified front in supporting him. Mm. Um, I, I mean, they've talked about it, but it should be something that's promoted. And, and should those religious organizations promote it in their... Uh, their own literature or publicly yeah i think i think publicly would be a good place to start you know we we hear on sundays don't be afraid of being catholic when you go out in the world a lot of priests have a beautiful message with that um but you know this is an example of somebody that is doing that is trying to bring his faith to the community and he's just being um, persecuted for it so so the concept is faith that you're talking about and religion, not necessarily Catholic religion. Yeah, just the concept of faith. Because I don't think he's Catholic. I think he's Christian. Um, but, you know, it's that concept. It just seems to be, a, you know, some type of a... Um, some type of a way to not be so attached to faith or to organize faith much mm. anymore. They, like their place in society, the concept of faith interest is below 
secular interests, then we don't have a balance. Right, right. We're at that point where we don't have the balance anymore that we once had. Right. Um, just for the, for the clarification yeah. of our audience, uh, Catholics are Christian, yeah. okay? Uh, Christian is the early name given to the, the people who followed Christ in Antioch in second century, way yeah. back when. Um, and through the years, Christians have been named with different groups, and we became Catholic, uh, soon after the the creed was composed in the fourth century, and and Catholic was with the small c, as as you know, uh, meaning universal. Yeah. And then after the Reformation, that small c became a big c because we were the Catholic Roman Catholic Church. Uh, yet there were Christian churches throughout the the, the world, uh, the Greek Orthodox Church, Eastern and and Western uh, Christianity. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, that's for the little, little sideshow. So. Um, where do you think this will go? When okay, it, by the time we finish our discussion, maybe this decision will have been made. Is this decision? Is this issue in front of the Supreme Court? Yes, as, as yes, we speak? Uh, yes. This issue is in front of the Supreme Court. And as a little bit of a background, historically, um, the Establishment Clause was enacted to, you know, protect um, the interests. Clarify the Establishment. Uh, the Establishment Clause is a part of our Constitution where it kind of explains there shouldn't be an establishment of religion so as to not have a theocracy, so as not to have a King Henry VIII situation where the Church of England is controlling mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. But it didn't say that you can't have, say, a Bible in school or prayer in school or anything like that. It's a, it's a different thing. Um, but the Supreme Court in the mid-20th century really put a strict uh, line in the sand and used words like separation of church and state and things like that, which are not which are very deceiving words and is not how the framers would have interpreted the relationship with religion uh, in the public sphere. So those Supreme Court cases have had a very detrimental effect. And those were the mm. mid-20th century Supreme Court cases. And now, 20, we're in the 21st century, we're trying to more or less repair the damage then and try to have that balance again that was yeah. once there yeah. in the beginning of the country. Wasn't you know? that phrase one of Thomas Jefferson's in a, in a longer yeah. document? Yeah, like that... He had that phrase, but it was in a document to the uh, Dan Barry uh, congregation, but he didn't mean it in the context of that. Like, that's typically misinterpreted. Like, mm -hmm. he, he was speaking to a small community and dealing with certain special issues, I'm sure, but not nothing having to do with not having a Bible in school or anything like right. that. Because at that time, they did. They had that. You right. had Bibles mm -hmm. in school. Mm -hmm. You had mm -hmm. a prayer in school. You had a prayer at a community meeting, you know? So it, he wasn't trying to stop that and he didn't and he didn't enact any legislation to say no you know that can't happen anymore mm -hmm. he didn't appoint mm -hmm. supreme court justices that said that at all so you have to look at the context of things yes. they're trying to cherry pick words and kind of push putting that at the forefront of their argument when it's when it's just incorrect historically you were use the word toleration first thing that came to mind was the edict of toleration in 325 but yes. after constantine uh and that edict as I remember historically, was literally to tolerate all religions. It wasn't to impose Christianity yeah. on the Roman world. Yeah. To tolerate, to uh, and and that's uh, it's a benign word, but it's, it seems today like it's it's a harsh word. But it's so all people could practice faith as they understood faith to be. Yeah, and we don't understand it that way. Well, I don't understand, but we don't regard it that way no. today. No, yeah, it's 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 just very unfortunate. I mean, they just the concept of if you have a little bit of faith here and there, all of a sudden everybody has to be Christian just because somebody wants to say a prayer after a football game. That's not what was meant for that. He is just expressing his, a, a particular faith view on things. There was a case that had to do with a graduation ceremony, and I think it was the not the nineties. The Supreme Court ruled, oh, you can't have a non denominational prayer at a graduation ceremony in a in a state school. I mean. This is, mm. this is radical stuff. I mean, non-denominational. I mean, it's, you know, there's ways to articulate respecting all, all faith tolerations without saying, oh, the whole country has to be Catholic. The whole country has to be Jewish. Right. And they're not understanding, like, that's not what we're trying. We just want to recognize that there is a creator, that there is a, an important concept of morality. Mm -hmm. um, just understanding that morality exists, you know, that you go through your day-to-day -day recognizing there is a higher presence. And the morality know? is based on... Um community's understanding of their divinity yeah okay yeah, divinity. and that is uh how can i say that? lived on an ethical scale 
Yeah. In in the community. Yeah. And I think this ties into a whole lot of other issues, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. We could talk about the transgender issue, for example. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's all the stories of a lot of young kids, high school kids, kids growing up. They don't know what gender they are. They don't know this, dysphoria, I'm bullied, things like that. They're going through every single day of school if they're public school kids, not starting the day off with just the, with just a regular prayer that used to be in the 30s, 40s, you know, early 50s. Even silence. Yeah, any Remember? silence, not even that at all. No. And there's so you, the hope would be that oh, you know, you establish a morality at home in the household, but that doesn't always happen. You know, I mean, so some you have children that aren't able to handle all the stresses of the world because they've been cut off from having a daily connection with uh, some type of a faith understanding in their day to day and in, mm. in school mm. and so you have all these things that are going on depression suicides high rates of all of this stuff in young people and you just wonder is there kind of a correlation between the last 40 50 years where religion mm. has been just taken out of school you know and you've seen higher rates of suicide and or other types of terrible things that happen to, to younger people i don't know it's something to think about and yeah yeah frankly, they should do some studies on that so you're not putting your finger on it but you're saying open your eyes and let's look at yeah let's look at this like just look at cause and effect yeah. and you know or, or the effects and what's the cause yeah what's the cause of it and now it's become a huge issue now i mean you have situations where you know you have men running in women's races and and things like that and it's creating problems for kids kids are losing confidence in themselves mm. sources. They, they don't know their place in the world yeah. and they're, they're confused are you in, in your in your practice and we we'll talk yeah later about your specialties but are you dealing with these topics in your practice i don't i don't deal with these topics per se in my practice um i just defend tort cases like slip and fall type cases for big time retailers but I do blog on this on some of these issues. My blog called Publius in Exile. In case Publius anybody, in Exile. Publius in Exile. If anybody's interested. Yes, yeah, so um, be interested. Yeah, <laughs> and so I write separately on on that blog. Um, I also have written some things in the past. I an Alliance Defending Freedom Allied Attorney. So sometimes Wait, Alliance, that by me again? Alliance Defending Freedom Allied Attorney. Okay. That's just like a separate type of pro bono thing I help out with sometimes. We'll talk about that. Yeah, and we help. Al say that again. Alliance defending freedom, allied attorney. Interesting, so, because well, as I'm doing yeah. this, I'm sure our audience is doing this. Yeah, <laughs> and you know, we essentially uh, when there's opportunities to help with pro bono things or we write about certain issues, it's it's like a side community service type type thing. Interesting. You know, for okay, you've given yeah, us a nice yeah. little. Whoa, yeah. little you, you're, yeah. you're quick and you're <laughs> interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, we're going to pick up because we're going to have a few little sessions with Mike. Um, and I I should give you that little background. I know Michael for, oh, a good 10 years <laughs> yeah. since he was a little kid. As a, Were you a server? You were definitely a well, reader. I was at NCH, yeah. I yeah, mean, I he was a lecturer at Annunciation yeah. where I used to serve. Yeah. And I know his family. So yeah. um, to watch... A young man grow a, little, a boy grow into a young man <laughs> and a professional is just thrilling and to and to uh hear him put his catholic faith into action is doubly thrilling for me this is father lewis skirty with michael de benedetto the third we'll be back for another session keep in tune and we'll find out what legal aspects of the catholic faith and related issues you and i should look at <laughs>